Today I'm going to show you how to edit a Sunny V2 intro using his recent Chris Hansen video. The softwares use their Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. You don't have to have After Effects but it does make certain edits a lot easier to do. I'll briefly play the intro we're going to be looking at now. This video will cover exactly what happened to the six most notable creeps from Hansen vs Predator and we're going to begin by talking about the math tutor Mike Manzi who's had his life pretty much ruined as a result of the I'm Chris Hansen No You're Not episode. After the first edit will Will be the faint snow like background which you can find a clip of on youtube if you search for snow overlay import the clip onto the first layer you can adjust the scale and opacity you can also right click and select speed duration if you want to slow it down or speed it up if the clip is too short simply hold down the alt key and drag the clip to duplicate it several times you can then nest all the copies into one clip nesting is one of the most useful things you can do in premiere pro and i'll be using it a lot you can bind the nesting shortcut to the letter n on your keyboard the next effect is a stip to white transition that Sunny VT uses to represent a camera flashing. If you go to the project panel, select new item and adjustment layer. Then drag this adjustment layer onto the timeline from the project bin. You can choose to rename layers and nested clips as you go. Then go to the effects panel and either search dip to white or find it under video transitions and dissolve. Drag the dip to white effect onto the adjustment layer. You can shorten this effect by dragging it to the left to make it look like a quick camera flash. The next effect is the string or wire with two images taped onto it. I was able to search an image of string and photoshop two pieces of them together at an angle to create a bend. Obviously you'll have your own image assets or designs, I'll just use his to show how the effects are done. All I've done to get his images is duplicate his video then create a mask around the image I want with a frame hold to get each still picture used in his intro. Next I'll line up the string and rotate the crime watch screenshot to fit on the string and then nest the two images together so when I add a motion effect it'll apply to both of the images at once. By placing this on the timeline underneath the adjustment layer, I can move the playhead right up until the first frame that the images become visible, and select the stopwatch for position and scale keyframes. Sometimes you only need one of the keyframes, but I normally click position and scale just in case you end up needing to adjust that one as well. Then what you can do is move the playhead about a second into the timeline and increase the scale, which will automatically create another keyframe. You can then click and drag in an empty space to highlight all of your keyframes, then right click and select temporal interpolation and then auto bezier. This helps create a smooth transition. Now what you're going to do is repeat this step but with the pizza guy image. A trick I use to get the transition keyframes to line up for both images is if you select the image you just made a motion edit on and select the arrow to go to the next keyframe it'll line up the playhead at the correct spot on the timeline. Then you go to the pizza guy image and move it to its final position on the string and create a position keyframe. Then go back to the first edit and select the left arrow to go back to the first keyframe to reposition position the playhead to the correct starting position and then go back to the pizza guy image and reposition it lower it to about halfway and it should create a new keyframe and then auto bezier these new keyframes as well when you play it back both images will start and stop moving at the same position in the timeline it saves you having to memorize or write down timestamps instead next we'll add a camera shutter sound effect which you could find on youtube and download as mp3 or record using obs or some other software and then you take the sound effect and line it up with the dip to white transition effect. Then of course there's background music. Sunny V2 uses a lot of intense or dramatic music tracks, which I've managed to find some of them. I believe he gets most of his music from Epidemic Sound. You might recognize these two tracks which I'll briefly play. Unfortunately it's a subscription based audio library so you'd have to pay the subscription if you wanted to use the music and not get a copyright strike. If you don't want to pay or use copyright music or risk a copyright strike then you can use YouTube audio library located on the YouTube studio page. I use use Epidemic Sound for my other channel which is how I stumbled across Sunny V2's music track so he obviously pays for his music and sound effects. The next part of the intro is a lot easier since you can just copy and paste what you did in the first part and simply replace the images with the new ones. If you highlight or hold down shift and select the three clips or images and the sound effect then hold down alt and drag them to the right four times you will then have five copies of the same effect. You can then move all the adjustment layers up one layer and place your new images below. Then line them up in the right position. Then you can right click copy the original image, then right click on the new image and select paste attributes. This will import all the same keyframes and motion effects so you don't have to do it again. You can then tweak this around to make it line up perfectly if you need to. The next part of the intro will have three components which get nested together and then have a motion effect applied to them all at once. The first is an image of the tutor positioned on the left side of the video. Then move forward a few frames and this is where we'll jump into After Effects. All you have to do is type the text, it 
looks something like Times New Roman with a bold and italic style. Then we can go to Animation Composer 3, which is a free plugin and has a big library of time saving effects. Then go to Starter Presets, then Transitions, Text Layer, and right click on the first effect called Fade Characters Separately and select Add to Layer as in. Make sure you save the file, then you can go back to Premiere Pro and import it or dynamic link this effect. Then if you move the playhead forward until the text effect is finished, then add the third image and position it over the text. Add a crop effect to this and then crop the image from right by increasing the blue percentage value up until the image disappears. Here is where you can make a keyframe, then move the playhead forward a few frames and then decrease that same percentage value back down until the image appears. And then you can select all the keyframes and add an auto bezier. You can nest these three clips into one and add position keyframes so the image starts on the right hand side of the screen and what you'll notice is Sunny V2 makes this image bounce around as it slides from right to left. To create this effect all you have to do is make several keyframes for all the positions you want it to bounce around to. I added about five different keyframe positions right before making a scale down and position keyframe. Then you'll get the crime watch image. If you want to create a red border then select the rectangle tool and draw a box around the image. Make sure the essential graphics panel is visible. This can be enabled in the window preferences at the top of the page. Then make sure you select shape in the essential graphics panel and you can change the color to red or any color you wish to use. Make sure the graphic layer you just created is underneath the image so you can see the border. You can also resize and reposition it until it fits. Then go ahead and nest these two together into a single nested clip. Using the same keyframing technique you can make this image move from the bottom of the screen up until it's sitting on top of the image below. You can also add rotation keyframes to get the same rotating effect Sunny V2 uses. And then you can nest both of those two nested clips you've created again to make one master nested clip for the final motion of this scene. For the slide to right transition you can create a couple of subtle bounce keyframes and then slide the image off screen to the right for the final keyframe. Now we want this to start sliding slowly to the right then ramp up in speed towards the end. So auto bezier all the keyframes then select the arrow to the right of the word position which reveals a velocity graph. Then select the final keyframe to reveal these small blue dots which you can drag around and reposition to create this curve that starts off slow and flicks upwards at the end. And we can now play the clip we've created. So it's more or less the same as Sunny V2's intro. You can obviously tweak it and rearrange things, come up with your own unique intro using some of these techniques. Let me know below if this was helpful or if there's anything else you want me to cover or go over. Thanks for watching. See you next time.